Dr. Frank Spinelli. 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 I can't get through. Welcome to Healthy Life, in for Dr. Tim Johnson, I'm Dr. Jay Adlersberg. In 1991, in an attempt by the international community to alert humanity to the threat of AIDS, the first World AIDS Day was marked. Today, according to the United Nations, some 25 million people have already died from AIDS. A further 40 million men, women and children are living with HIV. Joining us for a discussion on safe sex and to give us the details of HIV testing is Dr. Frank Spinelli, the Hi, Dr. Director Jay. of HIV. HIV Medicine at Cabrini Medical Center in New York. Welcome, Dr. Spinelli. Thank you for having me. Now, let's talk a bit about uh, the bottom line, which is AIDS testing. I'm sure everybody is concerned about that uh, if they're uh, uh, sexually active. W what does AIDS testing mean nowadays? Well, I think it's really important that in 2006, the CDC made their recommendation that all patients should be tested for HIV 13 years of age or older if they're sexually active. You know, it's not only a gay disease, it's not only a disease of people who are IV drug users, it affects everyone. It's not just in the United States, it's a global situation. You know, right now, in the United States, there are over one million people infected with HIV. And the frightening thing about that is, is that 25%, that's one out of four people who are HIV positive, don't even know it. So we really need to reach those people. This is CBS News on Logo. I'm Itai Hot. 85 vaccine trials for HIV, and scientists say they're no closer to solving the puzzle. This latest news coming out of the International AIDS Conference in Toronto this week. Doctors are now calling for more creative research if a cure is ever to be found. It's not all bad news, though. New discoveries on how the virus first attacks the immune system can be key to helping develop a first-ever vaccine. There's a lot to talk about, a lot of new developments. Earlier, I spoke to Dr. Frank Spinelli, an HIV specialist who's been following the conference. He came to our studios to talk about some of the highlights. HIV was usually under the hospice of infectious disease. Now that the case has gotten so big, they predicted that it will surpass the bubonic plague in numbers that now it needs its own conference. And, you know, last, uh, last uh, two years ago when we had it in Bangkok, it was huge. This has been a major success, it's probably the most delegates they've ever had. And I anticipate it'll be even bigger probably in the next two years when they have it in Sydney. In fact, Bill Gates is saying right now, if you want money from my foundation, mm -hmm. you have to share information. Exactly. You can't do it privately. Right. How's that working? Well, I think it was important enough that he had to come there and speak as well as uh, President Clinton. But I think it really resonated to everyone that he was telling the truth, that he was right. Joining us to shed some light on these findings is Dr. Frank Spinelli, the clinical director of HIV medicine at the Cabrini Medical Center here in New York. Thanks for being here, Dr. Spinelli. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about this study, a pretty dramatic increase, about 50% uh, reduction in the risk of getting HIV if a man circumcised. That's exactly right. What they did was, that this study was done in Africa, specifically in Kenya and Uganda, and what they did was they, they subsidized these men into two groups, those who were circumcised and those who were uncircumcised. However, the NIH had to stop in and actually stop the study because actually it was deemed unethical to not offer a circumcision in these men who wanted it because the prevention risk was less than 50%. People were having the amount of uh, HIV they were contracting. We're not saying it's a magic bullet that you're not gonna get HIV, but we are saying that you can reduce the risk of contracting it. More than 
25 years after the discovery of HIV, there is still no cure for AIDS. HIV was considered a death sentence. Your average life expectancy was no more than 10 years from the time of diagnosis. So now you cut all the way here to 2006. You're looking at revolutionary drugs that are one pill once a day. I mean, the thought of that 25 years ago would have been unheard of. But because HIV weakens the immune system, complications can arise. Dr. Spinelli. I found out that during Dr. Spinelli that I had cancer, I had lymphoma. This is almost completely gone. Yeah. It's very She says I'm doing great with chemo, so. If I take my pills and stuff like that, I could probably do another year or so. HIV positive since 1991 and diagnosed with cancer this October, Joe Calabro's responding to chemotherapy and a new regimen of AIDS drugs. But it's been a tough battle. We get tired. I wake up wondering what's going to happen today. Um, I take my medicine and I take one day at a time. I take one day at a time. Well, initially, people went on very elaborate uh, drug regimens, and they used to actually call them cocktails 16, 18 pills a day with major side effects constant headaches, not sleeping. Uh, diarrhea. Within the last five years, we've seen the birth of protease inhibitors so that now if you give someone a diagnosis of HIV, it's not so much a death sentence anymore. So we're kind of urging people just really to educate them about prevention, just going back to the basics because even though I'm a doctor and I'm in private practice, I think all my patients understand this. I'm surprised every day by how little people know about HIV and prevention. Dr. Frank Spinelli, thank you so much for joining us from Cabrini Medical Center. Thanks for your insights today. Thank you so much. Dr. Frank Spinelli, Clinical Director of HIV at Cabrini Medical Center. Thanks so much for coming in to talk to us. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here and sharing the information Thanks with us. Thanks for having me.